up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 68. A short time ago, I took a deep dive into the story of the Fountain Blue Las Vegas. While I was doing research for that video, I noticed another massive plot of land with another ghostly, unfinished structure upon it. Yes, literally right across the street from the infamous Fountain Blue was another failed mega project. Despite active construction now underway and most of this resort now open, much of it never quite lived up to the initial plans. So join me today as we take another trip down the glitz and glamour of the Las Vegas Strip and discover how one of the largest private hotel projects in the world, Echelon Place, was ultimately abandoned. This episode of Abandoned has been brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to contribute and help the show while also getting unique perks, click the link in the description below. It all began with the iconic Stardust Hotel alongside Las Vegas Boulevard on the north end of the Strip. The hotel had certainly enjoyed a colorful past, with several ties to organized crime and even the Mafia. It wasn't until the 1980s though that Boyd Gaming took over the property and really corrected many of these rampant issues. By the early 2000s, Boyd Gaming began purchasing land surrounding the Stardust, seemingly with the intentions to either use it for the Stardust or for something much bigger. With their now 63 acres of land and the Stardust struggling, in 2006, an announcement was made that Boyd Gaming would demolish the existing casino and build a massive 5,300 room mega resort called Echelon Place. Along with the insane amount of hotel rooms, the property would also feature a million square foot convention center, 350,000 square feet of retail, 140,000 of casino space, and over 25 bars and restaurants with a massive pool deck. This was Boyd's entry into the luxury and premium markets of Las Vegas, and a segment Stardust just wasn't really satisfying. On the north end of the Strip especially, cheaper hotels like Circa Circus really populated that area. But Boyd had the idea to build something much more premium and luxury and bring that unique market to that side of the Strip. Echelon, however, would be just one of several towers to make up this enormous complex, as adjacent to the main hotel buildings would be their development partners. This would include a Shangri-La Hotel, which would have been the company's second hotel in North America at the time, and their first in the United States. Across the property would be another two brands owned by Morgan's Hotel Group, a luxury boutique hotel company from New York City. Altogether, there would be four separate hotels, a collection of all types of entertainment, and many partners all coming together to build what was believed to be the second most expensive hospitality project in the world. Echelon Place was set to cost over $4.8 billion and set to open in 2010. After even more land was acquired in 2006, the now 87-acre property was set to completely transform the often poor reputation of the north end of the Las Vegas Strip. Stardust was shuttered in late 2006, and in a rather spectacular display of fireworks, the remaining tower was demolished in March of 2007. Land clearing began almost immediately, and a groundbreaking ceremony for Echelon was held in June. With Fountain Blue across the street already under construction, another luxury hotel, Boyd Gaming was also under the belief that there was immense demand for big, luxury properties on the Strip. So much so that they thought Echelon could hold its own, even with their competitor right across the street, opening at a similar time. However, not everyone believed in them, as when the announcement was made back in 2006, their stock took a pretty big hit. I guess investors weren't really sold on the somewhat big gamble. Despite this, construction moved forward, with pilings drilled in and foundations poured. Vertical construction took place around March 2008 on the main echelon towers, and this continued through the rest of early 2008. Just as the structures reached the ninth floor, everything was halted. Yes, our good friend the 2008 recession was knocking at development doors, evaporating loans and increasing interest rates. Boyd's development partners over at Morgan's Hotel Group suddenly had their loans cancelled, and obviously struggled to find a new institution to help fund their projects. This caused Boyd to put the entire project on pause, with the claim that once the global recession recovers, they could just restart. 
For the time being, however, the construction site would sit dormant through at least the end of 2009. As we all know by now, building projects during this time was not only risky by itself, but building a mega structure for a new market based upon the idea of people having money or willing to splurge wasn't great. To make matters worse, Boyd's gaming stock had absolutely plummeted from around $53 in 2007 to just over $4 by December the following year. Executives then looked at the possibility of decreasing the overall scale of Echelon. Regardless, the Las Vegas Sun quoted Boyd's gaming chief executive, claiming, quote, We remain committed to having a meaningful presence on the Las Vegas Strip. At the time of the pause on construction, investors actually saw this as a good thing, as Boyd Gaming was essentially playing it safe. The company had already committed $500 million in cash towards the project with another $3.3 billion in loans, most of which I would imagine were going to skyrocket in interest if they did press forward with using them. Amid rumors of the other side of the site restarting soon, Boyd was still spending money on maintaining the structures that were still standing. However, as time went on, nothing happened. Boyd Gaming as a company was struggling. Their entire business was in casinos and hospitality, a market that was really not doing very good during the recession. But they had spent too much money on Echelon already, and were apparently very much committed still in getting it done. Just not anytime soon. In late 2009, Boyd announced they would be postponing the construction of Echelon at least three to five years from that point. The original opening date of 2010 was now looking more like late 2018. Because this was such an important project to the city and an economic factor in the local area, and something that will help the recovery, an extension was granted to their zoning and permit expirations. Meanwhile, executives at the company promised the city they would embark on a quiet beautification of the site, allocating $4 million to cover the existing structures in a facade and revamp the landscaping around it. This, however, never happened, and the company continued to spend somewhere between 15 and 17 million dollars a year just to keep the property idle. Speaking of those structures, there was quite a significant amount that was built. For starters, the west parking structure was around 85% complete, with around 7 out of the 8 levels finished. Over at the main site, another parking structure connected to the main structure had its foundation port, with vertical construction flanking it. About half a quarter of the massive convention center had already been put up, with the primary casino in a similar situation. Within the casino, you can actually see the early stages of construction to the grand two-story theater. However, these were merely just massive steel frames rising out of the desert. Perhaps the most recognizable structure, though, is the main hotel, made up of the Echelon Suites, regular rooms, and the somewhat boutique, in comparison, Shangri-La portion of the tower. The rest of the site was being prepped for future construction, and you can even see the concrete outline of where the mall was going to go. The property sat like this until 2013, when a rather shocking announcement was made. After months of negotiations, Boyd had ultimately sold the Echelon site for $350 million to a Malaysian-based hospitality company named Genting Group. They're a multi-billion dollar company which also owns Star Dream and Crystal Cruises. They also have a huge market share in casinos across the UK, Hong Kong, and of course Malaysia. They already have a presence in the United States, primarily with their Resorts World brand, but had been looking to expand it in a big way. They were already planning a multi-billion dollar resort project in Miami, and now with the available land and partially built structures right along the Las Vegas Strip, this would be their entry into the markets. Echelon, however, was dead, as were the partner hotels planned to be built within. Now, something much different, yet also familiar, was about to rise out of the abandoned site. Resorts World, in a way, was carrying on the ambitious plan initially set. They announced a Chinese-themed resort which would feature a Great Wall replica and a panda enclosure. Most importantly, if fully built out, it would have been one of the largest hotels in America, encompassing a staggering 7,000 rooms, starting, of course, with the original curved 66-story tower. Flanking them would be several additional hotel buildings that would come in at a later phase of the project. 
it. In the middle would be all sorts of entertainment, including an indoor water park. Genting stated they would be spending between three to seven billion dollars when they're all said and done, which seems like a rather large margin. Initially, the plan was to begin construction immediately and have the complex open by 2016. This was later pushed to changes in the resort's design. But while this was being done, yet again, a groundbreaking ceremony was held, now for Resorts World Las Vegas. And with it, some minor construction work took place, mainly with topping off the west parking structure. Otherwise, work was quiet on the site, as the permitting was being sorted out. Delays, however, continued to plague the property until finally in late 2017, the dormant sites had sprung to life once again. The Echelon's unfinished structures sat abandoned for more than nine years. Almost a decade of what was going to be one of the largest and most expensive hotel complexes ever, sitting in failure and abandoned for millions to see. Finally, though, there was a welcome sight. Cranes now populated the immediate skyline. Rather quickly, construction ramped up to over a thousand workers on the site, and soon the primary tower once again began to rise. This irritated Wynn down the road as they filed a trademark complaint against Resorts World, claiming the facade looked too much like theirs and they would be misleading customers based on the aesthetics of the towers. Believe it or not, this became pretty contentious between the two resorts, and ended with Resorts World allowing Wynn to consult on their design. Meanwhile, Hilton Hotels and Resorts was named the primary hotel partner of the complex, using three of their brands including a regular Hilton, LXR Hotels, and Conrad. Finally, on June 24th, 2021, Resorts World had officially opened to the public as a pretty dramatic shift from what was originally promised all the way back in 2013, certainly from 2006 as well. Across the design phase, portions of the resort continued to be scaled down, and theming replaced with rather generic structures. Gone was the enormous center court and meticulously themed entrance with distinctly Chinese architecture. Now it was more or less big, modern, blocky shapes with LED screens on them. The interior suffered the same thing, as they're essentially just regular modern spaces with slight touches of Chinese influence. This is certainly no Venetian in terms of design, and maybe people enjoy that. Perhaps the biggest change was the entire south end of the property being left pretty much empty. In blueprints from 2020, the land looks to be slated for a small lake with pools at either end. Although in other concept art, it looks like it's an outdoor amphitheater. This means the, albeit large structures that stand now, could remain isolated and stand as the only big development on the land. It's sort of a case where so much was promised, and despite what was built being big, you kinda gotta ask yourself, is that it? I think it's obvious that the original layout of the initially proposed Echelon Tower was completed as it was meant to be. One thing that is interesting, however, is the intended Shangri-La section of the tower, a portion that jetted out at the junction of both curves. Now, in the original plan, the Shangri-La Hotel would occupy this portion of the tower. However, in the initial Resorts World concept art, this portion would also remain with an unknown purpose, though likely still to be a hotel. But once everything was scaled back, this portion was omitted from the final design. The thing is, though, this section was already partially built. So, however far they got with it originally was just topped off there, and that's just used for other things now. I always find it interesting when something was built for a completely different reason than originally intended. It's sort of one of the many quirks of reusing unfinished buildings. One thing to also keep in mind is that Shangri-La never ended up building another hotel in America. There's currently only two Shangri-La hotels in North America right now, and they're both in Canada. Resorts World Las Vegas is now fully open with some light construction here or there, finishing off this arduous and costly endeavor. Overall, the property received mixed reviews, which got better with time as more sections opened up. Honestly, I think my favorite part of this resort is the secret restaurant behind a seemingly regular shop. I like that, it's fun. Honestly though, that's really all that stood out to me. With 3,500 rooms, the complex also features a 70,000 square foot retail center, a 5,000 seat theater, a bunch of technology spread across the gaming floors, and quite a large pool deck with Las Vegas's only infinity pool. 
cool, although it doesn't particularly have the best view. While all of these numbers are impressively large, it still doesn't really live up to what was originally promised. Perhaps that might even be a good thing, though. Maybe, and most likely, a complex of that magnitude would just have too much of a hard time meeting expectations while also trying to remain profitable and filling rooms. If the last decade has taught us anything, it's that a property needs to be prepared to handle any economic situation that's thrown its way. Typically, the larger the property, the more difficult it is to weather the storm. Echelon failed, rather spectacularly, and in a very public way for many years. It wasn't a good look at the north end of the Strip that there were two mega hotels sitting unfinished and abandoned right across from each other. However, by the end, after 15 years since it was first announced and over a decade since it was abandoned, there is finally an active resort on the land. One that's maybe a little uninspired, and we'll see how it ends up doing, but at least it's open and people are enjoying it. I guess as a conclusion to that story, Resorts World really is completing the ambitious legacy of the Echelon Resort. If you want to help support my videos like this and get a bunch of perks like your name at the end of my videos, exclusive Polaroids, and merch, then Patreon is the perfect place to do so. Even if you want to shoot just a dollar my way a month, you'll get a bunch of exclusive media including seeing my videos days before anyone else does. Also as a side note, my first movie and feature documentary, Closed for Storm, a film about the rise and fall of the abandoned Six Flags New Orleans, is out now across North America and the United Kingdom. A worldwide release for everywhere else is coming January 2022. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.